couple months ago, I won a data challenge, beating out 450 other entries. Today, I'm going to walk you through the steps I took to design this report, which will be an overview of the way that I design Power BI reports from start to finish. This is my entry right here, and there is going to be a link in the description if you want to check it out yourself. This is the actual challenge. It's hosted by Maven Analytics, and among a bunch of other data challenges, it's a really good way to upskill in business intelligence. The challenge website, which I'll also link in the description, has a description of the actual data set and a brief of what the task is. Basically, it's to take the data from a Greek pizzeria and give some insights into improving their sales. So now that we know what the challenge is, let's talk about my three steps to make a Power BI report. Discover, build, and deploy. The first thing to always find out is who is your end user, the actual audience of the report. This is maybe the most important question because who the end user is can drastically change the features you need to include in the report. Generally, there are four different types of people who would use a business intelligence report. You've got your executives, which are your CEOs and upper management. You have your information workers who need to monitor predefined data points. You've got your analysts who are looking to dive deeper into the data and the general public who really are just looking to learn more about a topic. You can actually rephrase the question, who is your end user, into what kind of report are you making? This boils down to the end user and their needs. An executive is usually looking at data from the highest point of view and doesn't need your case studies and drill downs. They'll typically spend the least amount of time actually looking at the dashboard, but they want the most important KPIs and context to be absorbed as fast as possible. The key things to note here are the lack of filters and breakdowns as it's very top level information. Operational reports are for people who don't need to see all of the data, but usually the same data that directly relates to their specific process. There's usually very few filters, if any, but usually they will have some specific data points they need to drill through. Data refresh rate is usually quite important here. Some examples could be warehouse inventory management or tracking equipment malfunction. Analytical reports are geared towards your data analysts. There can be as many filters as needed to deep dive into the data through multiple hierarchies. Drill downs, drill throughs, and tooltips are some really important features you can include here. In my experience, most of the reports I make in Power BI will be this kind of report. And finally, the educational type of report is something that I like to think of as the non-business related report. If you aren't making something about business KPIs, you're usually making something to inform. This could be something like the nutritional value in coffee or something like Bigfoot sightings, which can still be a very good way to showcase your skills. Once you know who your end user is, your next question should always be, what's the purpose of the report? You might frame this question differently and ask, what problems are we trying to solve? Or maybe, how will this report provide value? If you want to get really into it, there's a quote from Mike Carlo, who runs the Explicit Measures podcast. How is this report going to make money or save money? There's really three main ways that you'd find out, but no matter what, the information should come from your end users as much as possible. You might want to have something like a questionnaire, or you might be getting written requirements directly from the stakeholder, but I find the best way to end up with a Power BI report that actually provides value is to get answers directly from the people who will be using it. I would even go so far as to say that being able to gather requirements from stakeholders is a key skill for a successful BI developer. If we go back to the pizza challenge, we're given written requirements and it's signed by the end user. The purpose is to find opportunities to drive more sales and work more efficiently. And we also have explicit requirements that aid the direction of how we meet the report's purpose. This includes visibility on busiest times, the most popular pizzas, and some other distinct questions we'll try to answer within the report. And finally, we know that this is for the manager of the pizzeria. Judging from the questions, this report just needs to deliver insights about what the data is telling us specifically how we reduce costs or increase sales. Because this is a manager from a pizzeria, he won't be interested in your fanciest BI features. He will want clear data-driven insights into what he should do. Moving on, we also need to know how the end user will consume the report. Most people in the Power BI space will know that Power BI Desktop and sharing Power BI Desktop files with each other is absolutely an option. But there are many ways that Power BI content can be shared with end users. 
there's the simple report sharing in Power BI service. There's Power BI applications, Power BI reports embedded as an iframe into a web portal, or Power BI embedded, which is actually different from embedding an iframe, where you have access to SDK APIs to integrate your Power BI with your web portal. There's also mobile view, subscriptions using PowerPoints, and augmented reality Power BI. And that's not even counting the final question. Are there additional requirements? In this question, I like to include information about performance, data retention, data refresh, accessibility. Are there specific database requirements, like maybe using a tabular cube or using an on-premise gateway? As you dive deeper into Power BI, there are a lot of architectural questions that should be answered at this stage. But because this is a data challenge, none of that applies. We simply need to make a single page visual. It's going to be static, no data refreshes, no security, just one simple Power BI desktop report. And that's the discovery part. Now we get to the building part, which will be where most of the time you use on the report should be spent. In the building phase, the absolute first thing to do is investigate the data. There's a couple ways to do this. Every data set will be different and everyone's skill set is a little different. And you can use whatever medium you'd like, whether it's Excel, SQL, Power BI, Python. But let's focus on the data for this pizzeria. There's four different Excel sheets provided and I loaded them into Power BI. And the first thing to do was to look at the inbuilt data preview in Power Query. You can get to this in Power Query by selecting the View tab in the ribbon. There's a Data Preview section that you can select, and these options allow you to get a quick overview of the preview data, which, while only looking at the first 1,000 rows, can be a really good place to clearly and easily show what the distribution and profile of the columns actually look like. Very importantly, it can also be a good way to spot potential errors or blank values. Once you've loaded the data, you need to model the data as well. What I'm showing here is very much not best practice in terms of data modeling, but that's okay. At this stage, there's no normalization or star schema. I'm simply com connecting the tables to each other by ID columns. And this is simply being done to investigate the data. Of course, even if you're not actually making a proper backend data model, you still need to make some measures, or maybe you've got some values out of the box that you'll be able to use as your KPIs. In the orders table, I've got quantity, and in the pizzas table, I have price. So I can use something like the related function after I create a relationship between the two tables using the pizza ID, and this related function will allow me to use columns from different tables in the same formula. But I also have to mention that in a real world scenario, you try to make all of the facts into one table so you wouldn't have to use this specific formula. On the other hand, for data challenges, I find myself not focusing too much on the back end because most of the data challenges are very front end centric. However, I do have to say I did find myself wishing that I had done the back end properly at several points during this report because it would have made a lot of the DAX much easier to do. Then I can finally start asking the data questions, sometimes literally. In Power BI, there is an AI visual called key influencers that you can use. You can throw in a column or a measure that you want to analyze into the analyze visual field, then ask it to explain the values increase or decrease by a number of parameters. I can even check the top segments, which will automatically segment your data and provide descriptions. And if you select one of these segments, it'll show you some you know, explanatory information about what the segment is and how much of it there is. It's a pretty good explanatory tool while looking at the data, but there it's not enough. So we've talked about column profiling and AI visuals, but what you actually need to do is you need to start investigating the data yourself. Always focus on the purpose of the report and build DAX measures with that in mind. This is the point you should start thinking about what you're trying to say in your report. Here's an example of how I do my data investigation. When I'm actually looking at different fields, at different KPIs, I'm trying to identify patterns, insights, and something of value. And usually I'll do this by looking at tables and bar charts mostly. What I want to do is I want to see if I can find like the things that are most common most in their category, most of a specific KPI, and you need to really lay these things out against different dimensions so that maybe you'll be able to find something that provides some good insight. However, if the end user, the manager of the pizzeria, was to look at this collection of random charts and tables, it wouldn't provide too much value because it's really hard to parse through. 
In this case, what you need to do is you need to make a draft because the purpose is to tell the story. This is a report for someone who is non-technical who only wants to know how his business can perform better. So I chose to make my report show specific recommendations where each section of the report would be one recommendation. Each recommendation would need to be something backed by data. So if I recommended something, I would need to show why the data actually supported this, which would result in data-driven insights. So let's take a look at how I did this. First, I'm going to try to visualize the requirement. So if we take a look at the first one, what days and times do we tend to be the busiest? This can be explained with the heat map, which has overlays showing the weekday and the hour. Just showing the visualization is fine, but you can go one step further in the circumstance to recommend not working during the early and late hours as, as it's a very small part of total revenue. Then if we look at the second and third points, how many pizzas are we making during peak periods and what are our best and worst selling pizzas? Both of these are shown in the bottom charts. We can suggest a suitable course of action, which is to lower the variance of orders by making sure that during peak periods, the more popular pizzas are more expensive. What this would do is this would lower pressure on the pizzeria during the peak periods, but also depending on price elasticity could potentially capture more revenue. With some aggressive cleanup, that draft turns into this. And you can see that the recommendation is clearly numbered and titled, and basically is the first thing that you see in each enclosed space. And you can see data-driven insights to support the recommendation through visuals and text. This brings me to a part of the building process that was missing from this challenge, which is Power BI features. There's a lot of incredible features in Power BI, which are lost on this specific project because it demands a static report. There's nothing wrong with that. However, there are an incredible list of things that could very much improve this report, such as drill downs, drill throughs, tooltips, field parameters, bookmarks, buttons, conditional formatting, what if scenarios, forecasting, and cross filtering. But we're not gonna discuss those here today. Which brings me to the last part of building, which is the user interface and the user experience. There is some really incredible content out there which goes very much into detail on this topic, so I'm not going to do this in this specific video. I might make something else for that. I will simply say three things here. First, if you're not sure about what colors to use, using grays and one accent color is actually a really great place to start. Second, Gestalt principles are terms from psychology about how configuration affects human attention. Certain things like spacing, enclosures, the effect of color and symmetry really affect how easy it is to read the report and should always be considered. And finally, the aesthetic usability effect is something that states that something that looks nice is more likely to be considered usable. End users are usually more forgiving of small errors. How good your report looks does in fact matter. And that's the end of the build part. There's only one part left, which is to actually deploy. And when it comes to deploying, there's a lot of things you would need to consider in a real world scenario. End user licensing, which can be Power BI Pro, Power BI Premium, Premium per user, or even embedded Azure SKU licensing. There's also security through role level security, object level security, dynamic role level security, using AD groups or multi-factor authentication, workspace roles. There's also things like QA testing, UAT testing, deployment pipelines, end user feedback, uh, hypercare maintenance. Luckily, in this circumstance, it was simply a submission of the image of the reports through this challenge submission form. I simply did some general data testing versus the input files, and I called it a day. And that's it. Those are all the steps that I took, and that's how I won that data challenge. If you've stayed with me this far, this is only my third long form video, and I'm still trying things out. Please let me know, leave me some feedback if you like this style of video. Maybe I'll do some more like this. Maybe I will try something else. Thanks. I hope this was valuable and take care.